mobile phones do we use it only for making calls no no not just calling we use it for many other purposes like playing games playing videos accessing internet finding our location in a map but have you ever thought how do we locate ourselves in the map using just a mobile well it is possible because of the satellite navigation system device which is there in our mobile handsets so mobiles with gps vehicles with navigation systems weather forecast communication network television broadcast and so on now you must be wondering what is the connection well the connection is the geoinformatics technologies to know more about it we have with us two experts left to me is professor jk gar he is currently director of center for disaster management studies in the guru gobind singh indra prastha university and right to me is major general dr r shiva kumar he is currently the head of nsdi and nrdms of the department of science and technology i welcome you both sir at the studio professor garg our viewers would first like to know what is geoinformatics as you are aware you know it comprises two words geo means earth and information you are aware about it so it is about obtaining information about the earth surface using information technologies to put it together it is the science and technology which deals with the structure and character of spatial information its capture its classification and qualification its storage processing portrayal and dissemination including the infrastructure required to secure optimal use of the information actually in other words also it can be put like this it is the art science or technology dealing with the acquisition storage processing production presentation and dissemination of geo information it comprises uh, three systems one is remote sensing no which is basically data acquisition platform active data acquisition then we have geographical information system which which is a tool which stores and uh, analyzes the geospatial data and global positioning system with which you are familiar because it is available in your mobiles and it is uh, used for many purposes like tracking of vehicles tracking of ships etc you mentioned about the three components of uh, geoinformatics technologies that is remote sensing gis and gps uh, sir we would like to know what is remote sensing as the name itself indicates it is sensing from a distance now basically it means is that obtaining information about various objects various processes from a distance like the way we obtain using a camera basically to put it scientifically we can say it is the measurement of electromagnetic radiation mm -hmm. by certain instruments which are away from the objects uh, like cameras like uh, sensors on board uh, spacecraft etc as you mentioned uh, that it is a uh, sensing uh, uh, or collecting information about an object from a distance uh, so uh, sir our eyes can we say that it is also a sensor yes i agree with you i, I basically is a sensor which tells us uh, actually it gathers information about various objects and then then our brain processes it okay. to tell us that what are the things which are there so, uh, so that we are able to identify a person various plants animals and so on and so forth so uh, is there any specific wavelength region which is used in remote sensing actually there are three basic uh, spectral regions which are used in remote sensing though various other regions can also be utilized okay. uh, one is optical region which includes your visible part light as we see it and some part which is not uh, seen by us uh, like near infrared region then we have thermal infrared region and okay. then we have microwave region uh, which is from 1 mm to 1 uh, meter so when these uh, regions are used they must be having any uh, some specific uh, application areas you know as far as technology is concerned it has diverse applications it can be used in many areas uh, of natural resource management study of uh, atmospheric environment oceanography and so on and so forth okay. if we talk in general uh, parlance uh, this technology can give us information about uh, crops its condition uh, production etc then we have forest then we have wetlands actually it is enabling technology which provides us 
okay. information about various uh, resources, natural resources and their condition, whether the quality is good or whether uh, the ecosystem, a particular ecosystem is degraded. And similarly about uh, groundwater targeting, fish forecasting and so on and so forth. They, in okay. fact, there are myriad of applications which this uh, technology can be put used to. Okay. Talking specifically to microwave region, it has been mainly used for soil moisture estimation and uh, in case of oceanography, wave heights, etc. Okay, so coming to the second part, sir, as you mentioned about GIS, uh, sir, we would like to know what is GIS? GIS, uh, commonly known as uh, geographical information systems, are more recently being called as a geospatial information system. It combines uh, the spatial data with non-spatial data and uh, spatial data especially by reference uh, by putting it into a geo reference or geo tagging the data which will enable the capability to analyze and find solutions to problems at hand. Uh, in our parlance we call the in the geographical or geospatial information systems there are three graphic primitives which are used from the spatial data that is the point or a line and a polygon. But at the same time, you also have a lot of non-spatial data in the form of a table okay. which contains information about that particular object or a feature on the terrain. That information will be linked to that particular object or to a particular uh, referencing point on the ground will enable us to relate objects and features on ground with one to another and analyze them. Sir, you mentioned about uh, spatial data and also non-spatial data. Uh, what is the actual difference between these two kinds of data? Spatial data is uh, where uh, the information, as I said earlier, when we represent them in the digital domain today, uh, called a point, line, or a polygon. Okay. And the non-spatial information, when we talk about, is uh, which is in the form of a table. For example, if you are talking about uh, a road, uh, the road is uh, shown by a linear a line, but the road also has got additional information like the road from where to where it is going, what is the width of the road, how right. many lanes are there, what is its trafficability, what is the kind of payment it has got. So, this information is also available probably with another organization, another agency, that information in the form of a table which will be brought and linked to this particular line. Okay. So, then the line will become more intelligent, it will contain all the information which is known to us. We often hear a word uh, <coughs> spatial analysis, sir we would like to know what is spatial ana analysis? Spatial analysis. Uh, or more commonly now talked about is spatial information processing uh, happens because uh, you need to find a, derive a solution for a problem at hand or you want to get some support for taking a decision. You need to analyze the various features objects both static and dynamic in nature to understand how they are interrelated okay. both uh, spatially and otherwise. Uh, for example, if you are traveling from point A to point B, then you are following a road, that information is static in nature. But okay. due to various other reasons, in the real time there could be some changes in that on that road. There could be an accident or there could be a VIP moment or there could be inundation. In that case, there should be advanced information available to the motorist so that he can take sufficient precaution and reach his place of destination in time. So, for that we need to combine the dynamic information with the static information and analyze and provide a solution to the user. This is how the spatial information processing is done. Normally, the spatial information processing models are more intelligent in the sense they are uh, if the user himself may not be aware of what he is looking for, he only has problem at hand, okay. he will pose that problem to the system then that problem should get analyzed what kind of data is required first of all okay, yeah. so, and what is the product he needs. So, the specifications have to be generated and the product has to be uh, designed and a workflow has to be done and get diverse from various uh, agencies the data, analyze it and finally provide the solution either online or offline in the form of a hard copy. Uh, it seems that there is a lot of possibilities with the spatial analysis. 
And uh, coming to the third component sir, uh, the GPS, uh, sir what is uh, the GPS or the satellite navigation system? As far as GPS is concerned, it is a generic term for satellite navigation system. You know, since uh, it was U USA which launched it, its global positioning system, so people normally call it by GPS, though, though other countries have also uh, started doing this bit. For example, Russia is launching Glasnost, India is also going to have Gagan. Okay. And then uh, China is also uh, uh, planning to have or rather it is having compass is there and European Union will have Galileo. You know basically all these will be satellite based navigation system okay. and uh, they have a very big role to play as you are aware as uh, uh, Dr. Deshmukh you, you were talking about in the beginning whether it is mobile te telephoning or tracking finding out your location. And if there is a ship in distress, so, so there are also global positioning system or the satellite based navigation helps to locate and to, to send uh, rescue missions, you know, that these are the kind of applications. And some other applications have also been found recently to study even uh, deformation in the earth's crust, okay. you know, using uh, GPS. Sir, coming back to the remote sensing, sir, someone has said that uh, uh, it is a costliest way to make pictures of earth. Sir, what is your opinion on that? Uh, actually, I do not agree with this uh, phenomena. Now, you uh, take for example, if you have to survey a state like Delhi Sir. on foot, Sir. how much time will it take? Yeah, definitely. Basically, you have to, uh, earlier people were doing chain surveys, but now even with total station also, suppose you have to survey, then then, then it will require a lot of time and yeah. energy, right. manpower, trained manpower. Right. But if you are using remote sensing, then now uh, satellites, uh, you know, with spatial resolution, spatial means, you know, the, the, the size of the smallest uh, area which can be measured, right. uh, they have 0.5 meter or e even 0.3 meter, our own satellite is planned, okay. uh, Cardosat 3, you know, uh, it is planned to have 0.3 meter spatial resolution. Right. resolution. Right. So, what it means is that basically, if we use intelligently, uh, this information can be utilized and information obtained globally, nationally, regionally. Okay. and locally depending on your requirement. Okay. Basically, I will feel it is the cheapest technology. Okay. But before uh, we go further, we would like to know what are the different uh, kinds of uh, application areas of uh, this technologies? Applications for geospatial technologies or GIS is there in every field because most of the human activity is related to a location. Sir whether as an individual or as an organization or as a country, Sir. you need to have the support, decision support through the geospatial data. So, the applications could be in the disaster management or agriculture management or okay. any other natural resources including water issues or an individual to navigate and to reach a particular location. Most of us commonly today we do if we want to go from place A to place B, right. you will certainly go in and look at a map. Yes, yes. and find out a solution how yeah. to reach there, yeah. uh, provided the data is there or you will be able to do that. So, yes. so, the application part, you cannot limit it, the applications of GIS one to one particular domain. It is, it is all pervading and used in every activity of human life. Okay, okay. But sir, I am little confused. There, we mentioned about three technologies and their application areas. So, how these technologies are uh, used, sir? I mean to say, whether we use it in uh, some certain combinations or uh, what, what? How, sir? You know, as far as this technology is concerned, now first uh, let us look at remote sensing, sir. Uh, for doing a good remote sensing, also we need to have some other uh, reference data, which can be any existing information. Okay. Or you have to do ground truth or sea truth, as the case may be, sir. And uh, without the use of, uh, you can say, judicious use of uh, technology and conventional methods, you will not be able to get a good uh, uh, information. Suppose you want to, to do a potential f fishing zone in the sea, what you require is that some th thermal eddies will be required, mm -hmm. then some locations where chlorophyll etcetera is in uh, high concentration. So, so these may be the areas where uh, there is a likelihood of getting fish schools. Right. And uh, you know, if you do not have ground truth, then it may not be possible to do that uh, precisely. Remote sensing is not static. It gives you uh, information about phenomena and processes and things uh, repeatedly uh, after a certain interval of time. So, so that, that way you are able to, uh, to understand its uh, condition, its process and so on and so forth. So, so coming to your basic question, uh, 
regarding its utility in other sphere, spheres of life as dr shukumar has said it is fathomless okay you you can have applications in agriculture you can have environment management biodiversity conservation desertification cyclone tracking and impact assessment so on and so forth i mean you you just imagine and you can just think of any phenomena suppose there is a uh, urban fire somewhere in delhi so there also gis uh, gis is also used even for hospital management mm -hmm. traffic planning and you know so in daily life uh, there are ample application large application which which i feel is that you know uh, they have changed our life so if i can say if it is not an exaggeration we cannot think of our life uh, without uh, the use of uh, geoinformatic technology am i correct sir you are certainly right uh, because if you see maps are older than alphabets okay. uh, the our cavemen before they knew how to uh, write and read but they still had the some rudimentary maps so that way you need to you are inherently without your knowledge using the spatial technologies internally but today now with the modern technologies remote sensing as professor garga said it is possible now to combine all of them and use to your benefit uh, and that really will empower our people sir can you please name some of the national say initiatives or projects where this technologies provide a very critical input from the cave painting days we had come if you go and see the temples in the southern part of india where uh, for example in tanjore temples you will find the maps there and more recently during the reign of akbar Sir. raja thormal has effectively started mapping the agricultural lands for the purpose of collecting the land revenue so that we call raja thormal as a pioneer in our country for introducing this uh, mapping technology okay. so subsequently we have gone we have made lot of contributions uh, internationally also our uh, the great ark expedition in india during the early 19th century has uh, helped the world to understand the earth itself and its shape and size now we have a number of organizations besides the survey of india though it provides the topographical maps we have similar government organizations like geological survey of india which deals with the uh, whatever mineral resources and the geological features they are mapped on top of the topographical maps okay. and we have the forest survey of india which uh, maps the forest wealth of the country similarly there are many other organizations and of lately the national remote sensing center early known as the national remote sensing agency is now providing vital satellite data and also equally good uh, real time system of uh, providing spatial images through uh, the portal called bhavan and we have some research uh, components for the spatial data one is the national natural resource management system or a program which professor garg talked about in the department of space and a natural resource data management system of uh, department of science and technology uh from this experience of all these two initiatives we found there are number of uh, issues and problems so that's how the national spatial data infrastructure has come into being okay that nsdi the nsdi the reason why nsdi came into being is sir uh, as i said we have got a rich tradition of uh, collecting geospatial data and we have been doing it for the past two and a half centuries however there is no metadata that is data about data is not available okay. which often leads to redundancy and duplication and uh, different accuracies of the data which is being generated one is that uh, metadata is not there even if we create a metadata the data sets coming from one source cannot be in, uh, used in conjunction with another data sets that means they are not interoperable so if you you mentioned about the spatial information processing if you want to do spatial information processing one data should should be used in conjunction with another one it should be overlaid on another data set so okay. that you will be able to use it so that means the data sets are not uh, compatible okay. uh, the reasons could be many whether it could be different resolutions of the data different formats being used so what it needs is a standardization 
standardization of our of data is one of the important points which was recognized by uh, us and that is how the NSDA has come into being. And the third important uh, issue is the governmental policies sometimes have prohibit use of the data. Rightly so, because of the geospatial data has got a strategic value. That is how the national spatial data infrastructure has come. It has addressed all these issues and we have a common platform where there are 17 uh, government agencies, both spatial and non-spatial data generating organizations. They come together, they discuss and now we have a metadata of at least okay. some resolution. Okay. The NSDA has its own standards for the metadata, okay. data content and data exchange. So, what is the kind of job opportunities which is available to him or her? If you see basically uh, this uh, requires two types or three types of personnel as far as uh, these uh, uh, professionals are concerned. One is that which create uh, these databases, another is that which writes software for uh, making information systems and third may be even image processing uh, things which may be required. In uh, corporate sector, they take more people, those who are uh, you, you can say apt in uh, creating databases. Okay. There are various ministries in which you know such people can be uh, you can say recruited and provided good uh, opportunities. So, summing up what you have uh, mentioned sir, can I say that uh, uh, there are uh, basically three kinds of jobs which is available. One is uh, at the basic level that is about the creation of database. Second is about analyzing the remote sensing images and uh, GIS analysis and third is about uh, people who are proficient in uh, say programming or developing uh, uh, a specific module for uh, GIS. So, today we have introduced you to the field of geoinformatics technologies through our two renowned guests from academia and who enlightened us about the fundamentals of geoinformatics, the components and the opportunities which is available to our geoinformatics professionals. Thank you sir to both of you for coming over to the studio and sharing your valuable experience and time. Thank you sir. Thank you.